Hello and welcome back to the Gorilla Biker. In the last Jigsaw episode you would have seen me talk about um, how I thought the fuel pump for the tank was goosed. It turns out it wasn't, it was just fused, but I decided to pull the carbs again and we're going to check the float lights because to be honest I expected this, like I won't, I won't pretend I'm not disappointed, but um, I expected to come across something that I had done wrong, it was the first time I've ever done this, so if this is the only thing I'll be pretty happy with that. Um, Plus, where's the fun of not making any mistakes, huh? Then you don't get to laugh at me. So anyway, what I'm gonna do is just try check the float height to the best of my ability. So I already have the carbs taken out of the bike and currently I'm just draining them. As you can see here, a little cup uh, full of fuel. So that, that number one carb seems to be drained. Close enough. So now I just need to do the rest of them. And to do that, I can probably move this out of the way, like so, make it a little bit easier on myself. And it's fairly easy to drain the carbs, I'll show you what the, the one is you use now in a second. So, if you want to drain carbs, generally at the bottom of your float bowl, uh, you'll have something like this, it might not look exactly like this, but it's just a little screw um, which opens off the outlet for the fuel, say, and then your fuel comes out there. So there's going to be a bit of work in stripping all these down, so I'm going to strip it down and probably speed it up for you. I said I'd just record this real quick and let you know, if you want to see the carbs coming apart and being cleaned or going back together and back in the bike, I will link those videos in the description and they're also in my Jixer 750 playlist. Uh, other than that, I'm just going to skip that bit because I've done it before. Okay, so just to show you, okay, I just skipped ahead to how, how I had it set up. What you want is the mating surface here. This, oh, come on camera, that bit there needs to be like 45 degrees, like that, okay? And the intent for that is, so your, the bit that goes into your actual engine should be facing, you know, that way. So your pin should be at the top, like so and the rest facing down. And just as a rememberness, I'm doing the float thing to the best of my ability, showing you because some people asked for this. I am not a professional. I don't know is this gonna work. It should hopefully work though, <laughs> hopefully. Um, and this is this is uh, this is literally the, the original Suzuki service manual that I'm following, okay? Original Suzuki. So 45 degrees, like so. Roughly, I think it's about 45. I have it balanced on some screwdrivers. Uh, and the reason for that is so that it kind of sits on the pin correctly, okay? Um, obviously, if you have it too low, you're gonna have too much fuel in there. And if you have it too high, you're not gonna have enough fuel in there because if this was sitting higher, like these ones are, I'll show you that in a second, um, you're gonna get too much air, not enough fuel, and the bike just won't run. And you can melt your pistons, you don't want that. Next thing that is the importante, um, you'll see I actually have messed up all of these ones, so it's a good example, okay? And the reason for that is the first time I left it sitting down on this, uh, because the other way around also looks 45 degrees, so it's really important to keep this facing up, um, which the Haynes manual did not explain well and then I found the service manual, so that did explain it. But that's just a couple of little bits. Then we're gonna do, and I'm gonna show you while I do one. What you do is, so that little tab in there, you bend it up to make the float go down, and you push it down and bend it down to make the float go up. So if we're setting these to seven mil, so seven, one second, I'm just gonna get something to point to this. So from this surface here, to this surface here, not this little edge bit here, this surface here, we want it seven mil, okay? Now what I've done is I got a vernier calipers and I scribed a line across this metal, piece of metal angle iron, and then I just drew across it with a marker to, to make it more visible. Um, you want to do something like that. And then when you have it kind of leveled, that's all I'm doing is I'm just, Checking it like that, oh, one sec. Like so. Now I know it doesn't seem it on the camera, but that actually is, um, that is bang on lined up there. Anyway, we're now gonna do this one, cause they're all wrong, so have to redo them all. 
And before anyone cries at me, yes, I know I should have new seals here. Uh, I don't, I'm just gonna reuse the ones I have, which were new, but I've taken them on and off a few times. Um, because I've made a mistake on this a few times, which by the way, there is no shame in doing something like this for the first time If you make mistakes, don't don't worry about it. Put it on the bike, figure it out, put it back on, figure it out um, If you're wondering what these numbers are here for, that's for when I'm setting the air screw It's just easier if you pop it in and you see, oh, okay, I'm at number two It's just easier to, to count how many turns you have out. That's why I drew, drew numbers all the way around it uh, If you're wondering. Anyway, so this is too high so what I'm going to do is gently bend it down. And I know there's better tools to use than a screwdriver, but a screwdriver is what I have. So what you want to do is bend it. And check it so that's still too high. And then bend it again. And what I had originally was I definitely had, I've done this like I said a few times, I definitely set them too low initially because uh, I measured from the wrong side and then I set them too high. So first I ran the bike rich and then I ran it lean. So hopefully this time I get it right. A little bit more. And you do have plus or minus one mil to play with here. Actually that looks pretty right. So I'll probably leave that one. Still a, still a touch high. Okay, so that one is now set to seven, and this one is set to seven, and what I'm gonna do is go along and just do these two as well, which, as I pointed out, are far too high. And this one, yeah, this one's way, way too high. So anyway, this had like just air. And when you have these back in the bike, which we'll do in a minute, I'll put it all back together, uh, you, you want to run it. And then once you have a run, um, pop in and out your spark plugs as you go and just check um, if it's running rich or lean. And if you don't know how to do that, just look up um, spark plug diagnosis or something. Because you get pictures on Google, which is better than I can explain it anyway. So I'm going to level these two, but that's all that there is to it. It's literally just very carefully bending that little tab until you get to the point you're at. And then I like to give a little joggle and just have a look and make sure it's not sitting too, you know, too deep. So it should have a bit of movement there. It shouldn't just immediately bottom out or you've done something terribly wrong. Um, but yeah, that is that is what is in the original Suzuki service manual. 45 degree angle here, thereabouts. Um, it's as 45 degrees I can get it by eye. <laughs> I don't have a protractor or a compass or whatever else. Um, and yeah, that should uh, that should be it. Oh, while I'm here, a little trick to get these ones back on onto this. It's really hard to do everything at once. So what I do is I just don't do everything at once. And uh, take this completely off the cap up here, slide it up in underneath. Hopefully you can see that. Uh, so one second. The risk of dropping the cobs is great, but slide it in up underneath then, and then you'll be able to work it on uh, to the the connector just with your fingers, and it'll it'll pop on itself like that. If you try to do that while it's still connected to the top cap up here, um, it's an absolute nightmare, and then it's really easy just pop that back on. Plus, you don't risk damaging this cap then, so that's. That's what I do, I just take it off this cap altogether and push it back on. Uh, you probably can do it another way, but that's the way I do it because that's what I found to be the easiest. Right, so we have the bike back together um, and I would imagine this is gonna crank for a while because there's now no fuel in the system. And before I do that, because I did it every single time last time, I'm gonna double check the uh, float bowl drains again because last time I did not tighten them. They gave me a minor panic attack. Aha, and there was one loose, so that'll tell you. Two loose. <laughs> ah, beautiful. So that's that's something that I check every time is now is those float balls. But anyway, um, I won't put back on the airbox or anything yet, we're just gonna crank it. I don't know what it starts for a while, like I said, it's empty of fuel, but we'll see. Oh, do you know what I forgot as well? 
idle screw. Need to put that back in. So you probably heard it there. The fuel pump did actually work for a minute or two, and the bike did run. Um, but not, lo not long after this, I brought the bike outside <clears throat> and let, let it warm up to take it for a spin, and it died again. What the actual issue was, was the fuel pump, and I'm just going to show you me popping that out and giving it a test. Um, the good news is I got a new fuel pump fitted to, fitted to the bike, <laughs> and the issue was I had pinched uh, the old fuel line, which I'd never replaced. It was just worn away, and it was actually had tears in places and everything, so I replaced that. Didn't video it, it was like 20 seconds work, and I also fitted a new fuel pump. Again, the fuel pump video is shown in another video, Jixxer 750 playlist, you'll be able to see it. Okay, so we got the pump out, and now I'm just going to check the pump sands the tank to see is there any reason why it's not priming. So there's no life in that pump at all. But it doesn't look to me like, you know, anything's gone wrong in there. So I really hope is that, I, you know, I didn't get a bum pump. And I just want to make it clear here. I did not get a bum pump. The pump was working fine. Uh, I killed it by allowing I, to, to fix the tears in the fuel line. I cut it a little bit shorter. Didn't check it when the tank was fully seated. So the tank was fine and ran fine when the, it was propped up. But when it went down and seated, it actually pinched the fuel line. The pump was trying to work, push pressure through the fuel line is what I'm assuming, and it killed the pump. Such is life. Anyway, onto happier things. Fuel pump replaced, fuel line replaced with a nice new reinforced one. Now we get to take the bike for an actual spin. Listen to that. Running on the choke and all. It's time we take this for a, a quick spin, don't you? Don't worry, it's not the, the full first ride. This is just the... I definitely am not going to have to push this home when I do get a first ride. <laughs> so if you're noticing all the bike fogging up and stuff, it's because it's been really cold here the last few days. It's literally the first chance I've had to take this out. This was all like snow and ice yesterday, so we'll also be taking it easy. Um, don't be looking for, for, for heroics from me today. This is just proof of the pudding. The bike works. I am a happy Michael um, for now. And then I, you know, once I have the tires fully started on it, we'll be good to go. Okay, so we're gonna get one micro third gear pull in because these tires are, I have zero confidence in them, but we'll do a little pull here. Oh my word! <laughs> oh, there is, there is power in this bike. I did not bleed the rear brake enough at all. I don't really have rear brakes. That's what these tests are for. We'll go a little bit further, because I really don't trust um, these tires at all, especially not in this weather. Oh, but this bike, it feels, it feels good out in the road. It looks good out in the road, even under, under me, I hope. <laughs> And it, this is why I love carbs, just the reaction. I'm going really slow now. The reaction from that, you know, that throttle is absolutely beautiful. It just wants to go, it just wants to go. Now, I'm going to turn because I don't want to go too far. Especially now that we have another breakdown, that would not be good but not so bad for a first ride, eh? Or no, it's not a first ride, it's like a, a test. Not so bad for a test. My hips aren't as uncomfortable as I was worried they might be. Definitely gonna look into getting the rear sets for the bike anyway, but my God. Oh, that is something else. Color me a happy Michael. I'm just not trying not to lean this thing at all. It wants to lean. The, <laughs> the whole system is set up to lean, but I don't want to lean because these tires are really bad. <laughs> and I'm not far enough from home that there's any heat in them at all. There's definitely zero heat. So, such is the way of things. Those rear brakes are not there. I know I need to get... 
Oh, thank you, sir. Oh my God! <laughs> oh, wow! <laughs> that is something else. <laughs> oh my God, that is something else. That. <laughs> That made rebuilding it worth it. <laughs> I'll see you back at the shed. Well now isn't that something? The S-Rad's first time out in the road in a long time without breaking down. Uh, it feels really good, apart from obviously the back brakes is not working. <laughs> that is my own fault. I obviously, there's obviously still bubbles in there somewhere, so I'll have to fix that. That's a small problem. Front brakes work, work fine. A little bit more squishy than I like, so I'm going to give them another bleed too. Um, but I, I, I was expecting it to kind of shake loose some bits, so that's good. Um, these aren't traveling down too far, you know, so that, that's good too, because I wanted them kind of stronger with the amount of fluid I put in, so that looks good. Overall, I think I've done an okay job here. Like an okay job. Not an astounding, but an okay job. Okay, so next on the menu, new tires better weather and then we can do a proper first ride on this bike for anyone who's following along just for this bike um, I'm not even close to being finished I want to do rear sets I want to get upgraded headers which will probably mean I have to change the jets again I want to bring this bike on track I want to bring this bike on a trip with Granton and Moto Dragon that's important to me as well and all that is going to happen hopefully soon but for now for now, <laughs> it works. And oh, there is, there is some delicious power in there, isn't there? Oh yeah, I'm gonna like this bike. Okay, back to whatever outro I did, if I did an outro, if I didn't, <laughs> what more do you need? <laughs>